Okay, for the next three weeks, we will be reading this chapter book called Key to the Treasure by Peggy Parrish. Anyhow, it is um, a very well-used book. You get to keep it. I'm ordering a new set. I've had these now for at least 25 years. Um, they have a lot of fun activities in them. I hope you enjoy. Um, you may follow along in your book as I read aloud. Okay, key to the treasure. And you'll also find that Mrs. Dunlap on your student planner has broke it down. So on day one, Monday, I want you to read the first two chapters, and it will say that specifically. Um, summer plans. Hey, there's Grandpa now, said Jed. Let's go ask him. Jed, Bill, and Lisa Roberts ran toward the porch where their grandfather was standing. Oh, there you are, said Grandpa. I was just about to call you. Gran wants you to wash up for supper. Supper? Oh, boy, said Bill. Grandpa, said Lisa, we need to talk to you. All right, said Grandpa, but how about getting ready for supper first? Can't keep Gran waiting, you know. The children quickly washed their hands and sat down at the table. Now, what is it you wanted to talk to me about? asked Grandpa. A treehouse, said Jed. We found the most terrific place in the old oak for a treehouse. Is it all right if we build one? Certainly, said Grandpa. That old tree hasn't held a treehouse since your father was a boy. I expect it would be my he I expect it would be mighty pleased to hold another one. And Grandpa, said Liza, do you think we could put up a rope? Then we could use it to swing from the house to the ground. Grandpa chuckled. You sound just like your father. Yes, you may have a rope, but I'll get Mr. Sanders to come over and put it up properly. I don't want any of you getting hurt. Gee, thanks, Grandpa, said Jed. Isn't anybody interested in eating? asked Gran. I sure am, said Bill. So am I, said Lisa. Everybody settled down to enjoy Gran's good supper. Finally, Bill pushed back his chair and said, I'm stuffed. What do you say we start on the treehouse now? Now, said everybody. Sure, why not, asked Bill. Take a look out the window, said Jed. Gee, said Bill, didn't it get dark awfully early? There's a cloud coming up, said Grandpa. I think we'll get some rain before too long. Gran began to clear away the dishes. Don't worry about the dishes, said Lisa. We will do them. Oh, let's do them together, said Gran. After all, this is your first night here. Lisa threw her arms around Gran and said, It's so good to be here again. I thought summer vacation would never come. If you think you had a hard time waiting, said Grandpa, you should have seen Gran. She started getting your rooms ready two weeks ago. I wish you lived right next door, said Bill. It's such a long time from one summer to the next. That it is, said Gran, but your grandpa and I feel we're very lucky. Not all grandparents get to have their grandchildren with them three months every year. Gran smiled at her almost triplets' grandchildren. She called them that because they were so close in age. Jed was not quite a year old when the twins, Lisa and Bill, were born. I just wish Mom and Dad could have the whole summer, too, said Lisa. Yes, said Grandpa, that would be nice, but folks do have to work. Anyway, they have an extra week this summer, so they'll have a nice long visit with us. With Gran's help, the dishes were done quickly, and the kitchen was tidied up. Gran, Grandpa, and the three children went into the living room. My, it's getting chilly, said Gran. I do believe a little fire would feel good. How about you boys bringing in some wood, said Grandpa. The way that thunder is rumbling, I think we may have a bit of a storm. It might get really cool before this evening is over. Bill and Jed hurried to the woodshed. They loaded up the wood and hurried back. The sound of the thunder was getting closer and closer. Grandpa laid the wood and lit the fire. Lisa watched the little blue flames lick the dry wood and grow into bigger flames. 
Suddenly, there came a sharp flash of lightning. It was followed by a loud clap of thunder. The lights flickered. They flickered several times. Then they went out altogether. A line must be down somewhere, said Grandpa. Are the lamps filled with oil? Yes, said Gran. I always keep them ready in the cupboard. I can get them. Gran could see well enough by the firelight to get to the cupboard. She took down two old-fashioned oil lamps and lit them. Their soft light filled the room. There was another sharp flash of lightning. A heavy crash joined the boom of thunder that followed. Lisa ran to Gran. Too big to sit on your Gran's lap, asked Gran. No, said Lisa. She slipped onto Gran's lap and put her head on Gran's shoulder. That lightning hit something, and very close by, said Grandpa. It came from toward the front, said Gran. Well, it couldn't have been the barn, said Grandpa, but I should go check on the animals anyway. No, said Gran. Wait until this passes over. Grandpa looked out the window. The rain was coming down in torrents. He decided Gran was right. Jed lay on his back, looking at the picture above the mantel. It wasn't a real picture. It was just four pen and ink sketches. The first sketch was of a feathered Indian bonnet. The next was a small clay pot with a lid on it. The third sketch was a key, and it was a strange-looking key that had a hook on the end. And last of all was a large question mark. The picture had hung in the same place for many and many a year. Grandpa said, "Jed, tell us the story of the picture." The story of the pitcher, said Grandpa. You children must know that by heart. I've told it to you so many times, but you haven't told it this summer, said Lisa. And besides that, you always remember something new that you haven't told us about. Chapter two is Old Jane. Grandpa chuckled. All right, you win, but this time I think I'll tell you two stories. Two stories, said Lisa. Well, said Grandpa, it's really only one story, but I've never told you the first part. What do you mean? asked Bill. You'll see, said Grandpa. And while the thunder rumbled and the lightning flashed outside, Grandpa began the story. A very long time ago. When my grandfather was just a small boy, an old Indian woman lived on their place. Nobody knew much about her. She had lived there as long as anyone could remember. She had worked hard all her life, and when she began to grow old, my grandfather's family made sure she had everything she needed. My grandfather loved to go to her cabin. It was filled with Indian things, and old, and old Jane—that's what we called her—never seemed to tire of answering my grandfather's questions. Old Jane was always sewing. She tanned deer skins into the softest leather and made shirts for my grandfather and his father. And while she sewed, she told my grandfather stories about her people. There was a feathered bonnet hanging on the wall of Old Jane's cabin. Grandfather begged and begged to try it on, but Old Jane never would let him. She told him that one time, or the time had not come for him to wear that, but she promised that some day he could put it on, and she always said that when she. Died. He was to have all the things of her people. My grandfather never missed a day going to see Old Jane. One day, when he was about twelve years old, he went to the cabin as usual, and there was Old Jane sitting in her chair. Her hands were folded in her lap. My grandfather ran to her. He had never seen her when she wasn't busy, but Old Jane smiled at him when he came near. She told him to fetch the feathered bonnet. He brought it to her. Old Jane took it and took it and told him to kneel down. Then, without a word, Old Jane placed the feathered bonnet on his head. 
She kissed both of his cheeks and motioned for him to go. And look at that picture. You can see it there in your book. That was the last time Grandfather saw old Jane alive. All three children were silent. Finally, Lisa said, Oh, Grandpa, I'm glad you didn't send the feathered bonnet to the museum with the other Indian things. As a matter of fact, we almost did, said Grandpa. When we decided to let the museum borrow the collection, Gran and I packed the feathered bonnet too. But then, at the last minute, we just couldn't let it go. The men were here and beginning to take the boxes out. Gran ran and stopped them. We both rushed to the box that held the feathered bonnet and took it out. We put it back in the case in the hall. It had always been there, and there it stayed ever since. I do see what you mean about that story, said Bill. It, will, it had to happen before the story of the pitcher could happen. So that's Monday. Now you can do two of the worksheets that I included. Um, one, um, listing the characters, actually. Um, make a list of the main characters and write about each of them. Two facts it says about each character. And then do the summer plans exploration. Until tomorrow.